So we're gonna go meet up with my buddy Mike. He's a amazing uh, resource when it comes down to doing real estate here in Cebu. It's quite a different scene out here than it is in America. He recently helped me negotiate an amazing deal on a condo that I just picked up. And uh, we're gonna go tour around with him today. That's a service that he offers for people that are coming here to the Philippines and looking for um, looking for a property for themselves, uh, whether it's an investment property or somewhere, you know, for them to live as a personal residence. And uh, we're gonna tour around with him, see some of the, the projects that he has. Um, he buys quite a few uh, apartments out here. And um, yeah, come along for the ride. Let's go. to uh, I have a property in Guadalupe so right now we're in Fuente area which is considered in the city and in the city is a good place and as far as I'm kind of basic when it comes to real estate most important things are location location and location and the reason for that it's if you ever don't want it, somebody else does. But you could have the nicest place in hell and nobody wants it. You know, it could have elevators and, and three swimming pools, but nobody wants to live in hell. So it's always better to have location, location, location. Um, and the reason is because somebody will want it if you don't want it, and that's always nice. What are some of the things that you want to look for in the locations around here? Um, well, yeah. Me, I do a lot of asking uh, locals and, you know, I, I'm going to guess, but I'm going to say the foreigner here is maybe 1% of the population. So, um, I, don't, I don't take the opinion of what all the other foreigners think. I, where do the Filipinos like to live? It's either safer. I'll tell you what a lot of it is, is accessibility. It's different than the United States. In the United States, we all have cars. We just get in our cars and go, so it doesn't really matter where. It's a little longer commute. But here, the jeepneys are really important because for eight pesos, you can get a ride someplace. That's basically 16 cents. You get a ride someplace. So not everybody here has cars. Now, if your residence is not close, then it's going to be uh, a motorcycle, a little a little uh, t motorcycle taxi ride to the nearest jeepney station where the jeepneys run. The jeepneys are not like the bus in America. The, the jeepneys go all over the place and most places are covered. But little neighborhoods are not. They're not going into residential neighborhoods to pick people up. So if the residential neighborhood is kind of large and you live up at the top of it, you'd have a heck of a long walk every day. So what you do is you jump on a little motorcycle taxi and it'll take you down to the main road and of course the main road has the jeepneys when you're thinking about where to live you want to be close to a jeepney if you're a filipino if you're an american because a lot of americans foreigners a lot of us like to ride the jeepneys because it's a novelty plus it's so inexpensive we just haven't had the ability in in uh, foreign countries usually their mass transit is for the homeless or the people undesirables that can't afford a car here you've got plenty of guys that are retired I mean he might be a, a, a colonel retired from the military with a great pension he likes to ride the jeepneys why why the hell does he want to have a car he doesn't need one here now if his life demands that he has one maybe he's got children or he's got a wife and family or he's running a business that's a different story but if you don't need a car why would you have one and if you could ride these jeepneys or taxis and uh, Cebu happens to have wonderful taxi service. It's extremely inexpensive. The meters start at 40 pesos. So when you get in, 40 pesos. So do the math, it's like, I don't know, 80 cents. And so in most cases, you're gonna go maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes to some place. It's usually a total of $2 at the most. It, it, I find it rarely is it over 100 pesos, which is, $2.
What are some some of the other amenities that are kind of like the the hot things that you want to look for in the different different units? Do okay. the uh, okay. like the the pools and gyms and all kind of stuff sure. like that? Does that factor in a lot? Or I think so. I think so. And um, so those are referred to as amenities and. Uh, some properties are considered premier properties, so that's how they classify them. And we might say upscale, here they say premier property. This is a premier property. Um, premier maybe just means fancier common areas, um, but always, most always they'll have pools. You have to, when you're out here checking or looking, you look and see obviously if they have a pool. Here's another one. You're, you're gonna wanna have a, a generator. An emergency generator we just had a typhoon so it's nice to get newer construction because newer construction is the latest engineering as well as uh, they're required to have generators and so you might not appreciate it until like we had a typhoon uh, December 16th 2021 and uh, for several weeks, uh, power and water was out in the city. It's nice not to be walking 19 floors to leave and go grocery shop. So uh, buildings I have, I, I have generators and they all happen to, to be in the stuff I own is newer buildings. How about uh, with the water? Um, is that something that they, some of them have like centralized tanks? And yes, some, some store water on the roofs and tanks on the roofs. So if anybody remembers and you see stuff from like uh, The Godfather where they had in the old days and like in the 30s and 40s you had water tanks on the, on the roofs in New York City. Well now they have pressurized water so they don't need to store water where gravity flows. But that's in fact what those tanks were in the old days was water tanks on the roofs of buildings. Um, they still use the same principle here where they'll pump the water to those tanks uh, overnight and then during the day they'll just let it gravity flow down through the building and um, so that they have a, a set stored amount of water. Right here we have this complex, I don't know if anybody can see it, but this is in Guadalupe. I own some units here so it's easier for me to show what I already own. I know pretty much the ins and outs. I invested in this pre-construction. Um, How does that work for the pre-sales? How do you know they're going to actually finish the construction on well, the I, they're supposed to? I research the developer personally. Uh, I don't want to be with a too small of a developer. My scenario is, say the guy's got a rich dad and he's the developer. Well, if the dad dies and something happens, and then the guy just folds up his car table and leaves. I, I, I have a fear of having my mind, money tied in something that's with a company that's not reputable. So I research all the big developers and that's who I want to do business with. The ones that care, the ones that won't trade their reputation in, the ones that will finish a project even if they break even. That's for me, is it's important. Um, I don't know that everybody's trying to come here and get rich. People have an allergy to getting screwed. I don't want to be the victim, don't want to be a statistic. Uh, I've taken great pains to not be on that list of being a statistic. And um, that's driven me to be careful, verify, get a lot of information, verify it, verify it, verify it. Anything I, I'm going to share, I'm fairly confident um, because it's worked for me and these are practices I've used. So when I show this project, I was pretty sure I was going to not lose on this project. When I bought this project, this project is now worth, it's gone up over 100% in the basically less than five years. So I can explain that later, how it's done here, how you go into a developer and you buy. It's very easy if you're a foreigner. But here's the thing, before I did, and if you'd asked me three years ago, I'd have said, I think so, I think so. People would come to me and go, man, you did great. Not yet. Not until it's time to sell. Not until the fat lady sings and then you you exchange money. Is it over? Uh, it's like a fight. You may be winning for 14 rounds, but you get knocked out in the 15th. We did have COVID, but my investments seem to survive COVID. Uh, the values are the same. They didn't really drop. The developer didn't sell that many. And so how do I know what the value of my units are? It's because the developer has a sales office and is selling. I can go look at the list. The only difference 
is I picked first. So I picked the best units. And so when I go to sell my units now, I don't have to sell it what the developer sells. I can sell them less than the developer. And I can say with, with fact that I got first choice. And this is why I think this is a better unit than what the developer has for sale. So at this point, I become de facto competing against the developer. But the developer's a machine. They have sales offices, sales forces, they put money into this and away they go. So they start off with the pre-sales at a lower price and then they're escalating it up. So your feeling is that the value is basically set by the developer and then your unit is going to follow in price with them. Why wouldn't it be? It's in that development. Simply, this is what I do that other people don't do. Some people come here and get a bar. Uh, they'll get a restaurant. Uh, they're also called carinderias or carinderia, you know, a little place to eat. A lot of people uh, used to be, uh, what are those uh, uh, places for computer? Uh, internet know. cafes. Yeah, internet cafes was popular for a while. Me, I go buy something. I make an agreement. I make payments like used car payments for these developments because you're only required to put 20% down over a period of time. When it's finished, you pay off the 80%. So if you take 20% of something and you're only required to pay that over a two, three, four year period, the payments are pretty small. They don't affect you very much. But what I do, and then what the guy who bought the restaurant do is completely different. I get on my motorcycle and I go ride. I enjoy my life. The developer hires construction. The developer hires marketing. The de developer leases sales offices. The de developer does advertising, TV, radio. They do international marketing. Me, I watch them put all that money into this project. I get all of the benefit of what they do, yet all I did was agree to buy something. I didn't even pay cash. I put down a simple deposit, usually no more than $500. Um, in the Philippines, it's not required to use your social security number, and there are no credit reports. So I happen to have great credit. I have property in America. Um, I worked at a bank. I have a banking background and mortgage banking. But when I walk into some someplace and somebody says it's 0% interest, it catches my, my eye. Because the only person who charges you 0% interest is your mom. <laughs> People do not go around giving 0% interest loans. So when somebody says 0% interest, I'm like, I'm intrigued. And so I want to know more. And so, yes, I ask them questions and I try to get the facts. But after that, I verify. And it is, in fact, 0% interest. All, every payment I've made goes to principal. It's amazing. So to me, I know a good deal when I see it. Then I have to verify it. it's not too good a deal. Is this a scam? I think we're all the same way. It's, but all of us have bought a car. All of us have bought something. So we found something that wasn't a scam and we bought it. You know, it's, it, it was a good enough deal to pull the wallet out, pull the trigger. So let's well, go in and see let's what check I got. Out some spots. Yeah.
with um with foreigners owning land over here it's it's mostly apartments that people can buy not really the the land how yeah, does that let's, work let's, over here let's use the let's use the correct uh at condominiums so condominiums uh foreigners can own condominiums because you don't own the land you own the air inside your unit and you you can own the unit buy sell it own it in perpetuity um you know, read your condominium law. It is very similar to the condominium law in Hawaii, which is actually fairly similar until you get places like uh, New York where they have a lot more restrictions because of owners having a say-so of who's in the building and type stuff like that. I really don't know that, that stuff in New York, but I know it's a little bit different. But for most of the United States, condominium laws is very similar within states. Um, here, it's very similar. So I can own here. I don't own the land. I don't own the common area. But So there's not a square of the pool that I'm selling to you when I'm selling you my condo. I'm selling you the condo and rights as a member of the association to use, access and use. So therefore, um, I can't own. Now, I happen to be married, and so I... But I have been buying land and property here my own way. I've been acquiring stuff um, that I felt comfortable with. Um, there are ways to, to own here. People do corporations. People do shell corporations. Um, I'm not giving advice on anybody on how to do any of that. I know what I've done and I'm comfortable with it and I've purchased and, and paid for something and putting it into a legal citizen's name and had a lease with that person who leased it right back to me at the time of purchase. So um, I have a, I have a legal right to it. I have leased it for a specific number of years, what I already bought. So if for some reason somebody made it illegal for me to own a car, you know, whatever reason. So if I bought a car and I put it in your name and I said, you're going to lease it back to me. It's in your name. You own it. But I have a lease on this car. You can't come take it from me unless I didn't pay you the $5 a month that we agreed on. Why? Because I already paid for the car. You didn't pay for any other car. You're just doing me a solid and I'm going to compensate you for that, for your trouble of doing nothing. So there are ways to do things here. Um, I, once again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving advice. I'm not going to give legal advice to people. Um, I'm saying it's been done. I've seen... Here's one I'm going to shed a little light on. So the corporation deal. So sometimes they get uh, foreigners. And so you and I could have 40% of a corporation. Mm -hmm. But then we have three Filipino nationals that we may know or not know that own 60%. Because we can only own 40% of a corporation here. Mm -hmm. We can't own 100% of it. So now we've got you and I. Say you and I are going to put our money together and buy some condos. Well, now I've got three partners that I don't know. I'm not personally worried about those three partners because they already understand it but what if one of them passes away and their drug addict son gets hold of the paperwork mm -hmm. and he wants to say hey dad owns see he owns a part of this corporation and stuff no the dad was just part of a shell corporation another thing if you have a corporation and you set it up here you're required to report to the BIR which is the IRS quarterly your profit and loss and so if you're now renting out units, you need to report that. If you made no money, you still have to report that you made no money. So for me, the last thing I really want to do is uh, wave a big flag at the BIR or the IRS or anybody else. I'd like to buy a place, wait for it to get finished. If I sell it for more, then I pay my capital gains just like any other legal citizen. But do I want to start a corporation and for the next four years or five years, if it's four years that I'm waiting for a place to be built, do I want to be talking and reporting to the... Yeah. It's a headache. I know for a fact from doing the call center work that I've done out here that yeah. having a, being part of a corporation and having to do all the different reportings with the BIR, with the SEC, with all there's a lot of drama that comes yeah. with it. So I didn't want to volunteer personally. Remember? I didn't want to buy any problems. To me yeah. that's buying a problem. Yeah, that makes sense. So I have just I'm just kind of a one man show. Uh, I never want to end up in a cage for money. There's no amount of money that's worth spending my life in a cage for money. So, um, 
I enjoy the real estate stuff, but um, I think easier is better. Buy and sell legally. Yeah, it seems like there's no shortage of demand for um, condominiums out here in the city. No, and, and boy, if you ask somebody else, somebody who doesn't really, might not have looked into it, they just, they're, they're building them everywhere. They are. I think there's always going to be a supply ahead of the demand until there's not. Mm -hmm. But right now, there's, there's a plenty of supply. There's a lot of people over the years who have bought these as investment. And you know, those people bought five years ago, seven years ago. Uh, some of them aren't even in, but at $35 a month maintenance fee, who cares? Yeah. I mean, that's not even a night at the Outback. Right. So, um, if you were from Australia, or these are just things I've seen. Guy from Australia, or Great Britain, or Ireland, or a Western country, Canada, America, you know, just anywhere that you make a decent wage, and you come in here and you can see, you mean I can buy a condo here? And, you know, right now, you can't go back and buy six years ago, but you can buy today. And six years from now, you're going to say, I'm so glad I bought six years ago. Mm -hmm. That's so, I, you're talking to a guy that's been here for coming up on eight years, and I bought within my first month that I was here. Uh, what I do is what I did. I, I bought so real estate on the side. It was always my hobby. And so I did that in a, in a high market. So I felt like I was prepared at a high level. When I came here, the stakes were not near as high. Yeah, coming from Maui to, to yeah. here is definitely quite a, quite a difference in budgets that you're looking at. It's like playing on the $3 crap table. So <laughs> from going from a $100 minimum bet to a $3 minimum bet, it's fun. We're going to high five. Uh, we're going to win. If we lose, it's never going to hurt. Not, not particularly. Mm -hmm. I realize not everybody's come in here to do what I do, but I don't think a not guy needs to come in here and get a war story and then walk around and tell these terrible stories that you know people love to retell. Here's a for instance. Anybody got a camera on? Listen to this one. Did you know that Mike, when, when I was younger, microwaves came out? And did you know that there was a lady who tried to dry her cat in a microwave? Sure. Yeah, well there was a that story was told a million times, but nobody knows the lady. Yeah. It's it's a story. It, it's like a war story. It's a terrible story. Um it it just kept getting repeated, like people getting scammed in the Philippines. It happens, but it usually happens to fools. Mm -hmm. And a fool and his money will part. You know, he he's looking to get rich quick or something. I don't think you need to walk around protecting your both hands on your wallet and, and and being in fear. But you also can't expect to find a nun in a girly bar, you know? Yeah. And so, um, you know. What are some of the main things that people get caught up in? Is it that I, they, they end up putting stuff in the shady women's names? Yeah. They end up... Um, I think they follow their penis is what they do. Yeah. So their penis makes decisions for them like they've gotten away for. See, they've gotten away with it in America because they were married for the last 15 years. And then they just gave away their half of their house and now they're here and they're single and their penis is on all you can eat and uh, they're using hog heaven. And he finds a gal that, you know, does whatever he wants when he wants and there's probably a reason for that. And she might not have got the greatest reputation. He wouldn't really know. But... Um, so he's not careful. He's just happy and a lot of times liquored up. And yeah. so it might seem like a good idea and this isn't much, but he goes out and he'll spend 20 grand on a piece of land that she said it's, you know, her next door to her father's or whatever. And the guy puts it in her name and then, you know, in the short order, he finds out she's married or something like that. And, and uh, you know, and it's a story of they're all scammers. And no. Yeah, he got scammed is what happened. Yeah. Not, not paying yeah. attention. But he was available to be scammed. Aside from women, like, is there anything paperwork-wise that Absolutely. people need to watch out oh, for? Yeah, like, what's yeah, up yeah, with yeah. the... There's there's people taxes and stuff here that are different when you when you get a um, place. Like I know in the place that I got, there was a, a transfer tax and a capital gains tax that all kind of got brought into the um, 
yes. brought into the whole situation of the deal and I'm really glad that I had you to you know get get a good idea of what those were because if I didn't know any better I would have thought they were trying to scam me out of additional 13 percent yeah on no, you know the already a, agreed upon price of what we have they have a flat rate here of a seven percent capital gain so it's based on the contract um, so if you agree to buy something for a million dollars or a million start not dollars pesos a million pesos and so there's a, a contract between two people um, the guy who sold is actually responsible now sometimes people here say I want to net one million that means the capital gains will be the buyers responsibility and the six percent that it takes to register the property into the new owner's name and um, so that's a total of 13 percent so uh, you have to be it's just nice to have somebody who knows what they're talking about when you're looking at property because you're gonna go out and try to invent the wheel some you know some of the times we're guys so we're uh, you know we're alpha males or we want to do it ourselves or I know I know I know well you know enough sometimes just to get yourself fucked or get your ass in a crack so it's nice just to have somebody on your wingman to say no nah, this is how it goes and then here's a you know call call this dude you know if you're not sure but a lot of times we don't even want to ask for directions that's why women laugh at us you know we'll drive around in fucking circles and uh, we won't ask for directions me I'm a direction asker I don't care I don't need to know it all that's why I'm saying I'm not a lawyer I'm not giving people legal advice I'm saying the shit I've done and it's worked just fine I don't get sued I paid my fees um, I'm not I'm not uh, as far as I know I'm doing nothing illegal um, but uh, you know I I now married the girl that that I put the property into and I bought what is called tax declaration property but I also paid a professional to trace the ownership to make sure that what somebody was selling was indeed theirs in America we have title guarantee escrow we have title insurance it's never in question anybody selling a property anywhere in the United States it's it's gonna get caught so fast because there's gonna be title insurance I mean, he's going to guarantee that the title that guy is selling, it's actually insured that I'm buying your property. We're here, what buy. happens sometimes with the, t the tax declaration, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the, basically, who's been paying the taxes on it. They're yes. showing you the, the receipt that they've been paying taxes, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily have the title of it for one reason or another. Yeah, it's not clear title. Well, there are places, a lot of places in the Philippines, that have not cleared and titled property. They... They just have handed it down. Remember, this is a third world country. And so they haven't done that. In some cases, listen, this property wasn't worth the time and effort. It was farmland. I mean, and at one point, not so long ago, it was so cheap. I mean, you could get a piece of land for a piece of livestock. Mm -hmm. It's that cheap. It's not as cheap anymore. And, um, and nor should it be. It's some beautiful property, uh, producing plants on it, uh, great views I mean the secret is kind of getting getting out but I will bet that there are people who come from America just like me who came in and said what how much and then my next thought to myself and I didn't say it out loud was fuck that's cheap and so I I bought I, I purchased and I, I, I what I did is I found I had to find a level of comfort because just because it was inexpensive I did not want to buy a problem Mm -hmm. So I educated myself, I shut up and listened, I asked for direction, I said why, I said, you know, things that would seem common sense to me weren't exactly common here, and, um, but I did make some connections with some reputable people. Uh, one of the brokers that I learned from was the former president of the Realtors Association. So I like to I like to surround myself by reputable people, not people of poor reputation. Um, and then I'd like to use or get access to their people. Um, and so that's kind of the way I've educated myself. I'm never going to claim to be the smartest guy, but I'm probably one of the harder workers that I've met when it comes to things that I like. And real estate is my hobby. I don't do this for a living. It's made me a great living, but I've never done it for a living. I, I buy and I sell and I invest and I own and I build and I 
subdivide and I do it and I do it because I like it not because I have to do it that's probably why I enjoy it so here they have a thing called a tracer if you're going to buy tax declaration land what is tax declaration land it is not titled land it is another way they hold ownership it's called tax dec or declaration and so the way you first verify is who's been paying the taxes because if you'll notice none of you or anybody listening is paying taxes on their neighbor's property why because you don't own it so why would you so you're gonna sh you're gonna be able to start verifying by who's been paying the tax on it so if somebody's selling you a piece of property and there's somebody else paying tax on that there's your first red flag doesn't mean it's an it's a no deal but you should have a red flag up now it could be a family member or something but you're gonna want to get somebody to trace that trace the ownership and the documentation you're gonna get some you're gonna get somebody smarter than you and more well versed in Visayan and Cebuano uh, out here anyway Tagalog other places the thing that you got to watch out for in the tax deck situation is when you have like a maybe there was a title at some point it gets handed down to um, one of like the siblings or something in some sort of inheritance and then the that sibling might not have the cash to pay the taxes so their their brother or sister or cousin starts paying the taxes on it and they have the receipts of paying taxes even though they know that the other person actually holds the title and they're going to sell it to you acting like they own it but they know damn well that they don't own it Here, here's and then a simple you buy it and later on that person's going to come so, out of the woodwork with so the title this is how you defend against that so so a lot of people out there going that that right there scared me see your scenario yeah because there's all kinds of scenarios i mean you can just create them at infinitum if you go to the you're talking about this guy and his brother so let's say there's four kids if you get all four of them and the parents are dead you get all four of them to sign off on this piece of this transaction mm -hmm. it's done you fucking blocked it you've cock blocked it. it it these are the inherited people so one guy you know that, that quite often what you missed was well one brother is in Canada and another brother's in Saudi and the brother here is trying to sell shit and then the, the last sister is in America so you really want to get all those signatures or you want to see the map where the father left four pieces of property and one to each family with each child mm -hmm. and so all you're doing is buying off of this guy mm -hmm. and that makes sense so it's the stuff that it wants to make sense but when you see a red flag and you are greedy and you go this is a great price if I just fucking get it then I'll fix it uh, warning Will Robinson warning warning Will Robinson do not paint that red flag green and go forward not listen if it's a good deal it'll, you, you'll get a good deal and if it's not this one there'll be another one there's lots of good deals you wear yourself out a pair of tennis shoes looking for good deals and enjoy the journey but greed will get a guy's ass in a crack quicker than anything you know i gotta get this listen don't buy a fucking problem yeah make sure it's clean now in the Philippines but this is actually true in almost any place because you could be in a subdivision in Pocatello Idaho and your neighbor built a fence on your on your property line mm -hmm. his fence came over without your permission you own that you have a clear title but guess what you still need to be prepared to defend what you buy you need to be prepared to defend what you purchase here in the Philippines tax deck or title I have a really good friend of mine it's it's really sharp she's actually a tracer so she traces for ownership and she's very good and very reputable um, she she's the one who educated me in that she says you need to be prepared to defend it I said well I go to other people but you and she goes I have a clear title piece of property in a subdivision and my neighbor took a, a foot you know I bought this I, I didn't develop it was an empty lot but he built his house and then went ahead and put his fence a foot over onto my property so she's like take down your fence he's like no therefore she has to hire a lawyer so uh, it, that is being prepared to defend your property and you have to if you have no property you never have to defend it but if you've had a house for the last 25 years and in, in Houston Texas and you sold it and now you're here well guess what somebody could have sued you for for your your tree blowing down on their property your fence in the wrong lane blah 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 uh, who knows you're 
tree roots grew and, and choked out their water pipe, and so they're going to sue you to fix their sewer system or something. You know, you, uh, you can't predict anything. I can predict this. If you rent for the rest of your life, you'll never own shit. <laughs> and at the end of your life, you could have a 10 years worth of rental receipts, or you can have a deed to a property. I know which one I want. So let's go see something. I'm like right here, and I got the one next to it. But I own another one up here that I'll probably just swap with my nephew. I also own this one here. It's a balcony, so this is a 30 square meter, 300 square foot unit with a corner balcony, so you can get views to the ocean, but you'll also have here. I own one over back over here, I think, uh, and then I own a one unit here, and a colleague, friend of mine, owns the corner unit, and I only use it right next to it. Let's go out and look at a, a, a model unit.